Hi, my name is Jeannie Norris and I work at the Institute for School Partnership at Washington University here in St. Louis. Today I will be teaching science for third grade, but learners of all ages are welcome to join me. I'm so glad you're here with me today. As you can see, we are in a very interesting place. It's a creek bed. You might be able to see some water behind me, but the real story today is the rocks. Rocks have secrets to tell us if we just know the right ways to look at them. So we're going to look at the rocks in this creek bed and rocks that you might see in buildings around the city of St. Louis that can tell us secrets about Missouri's ancient ecosystem past. So let's go ahead and see what we can figure out together today. Remember, if we want to figure stuff out, we've got to do two things, notice and wonder. So here's a simple chart that you can make with me if you're at home watching with a pencil and a piece of paper, and we can track these things together throughout the lesson. I drew an eye for what I notice. What I notice are things that I observe, and I use my senses to do that observing. I drew a question mark for what I wonder. What I wonder, that's just questions that I have about what I notice. So what we're going to do now is look at something that we saw while we were on a walk in the city and we will see what we can notice and wonder about what we observed on that walk. We're out taking a walk this morning. Do you like taking walks? Well, when we take walks, we look really closely at the buildings we pass by. So these buildings in St. Louis can be very old. Sometimes they were built in the early 1800s. And if you notice, they're usually built out of this grayish white stone. Well, when we were looking at this rock, we were thinking about how people had to take that rock out of the earth in St. Louis to build this building. So when we were walking past this rock, we noticed something really strange. Come here and look. Look at that right there. What does that look like to you? To me, it looks like a seashell, like you would find at the ocean or the beach. Isn't that strange? What do you notice or wonder about that fossil? Okay, that was really interesting, wasn't it? Have you ever seen anything like that before when you went on a walk? Let's write down all of the things that we have noticed and wonder about that walk. What did you notice? I noticed that there was a seashell fossil in the rock. I noticed that the building was very old. What else? I noticed that the rock was light gray in color. Those are some good observations. What would you add to that list? Maybe that it was really loud. The highway caused a lot of noise. Okay. What did you wonder about what you noticed? I bet you could come up with some really good questions about this. I wonder where did those rocks come from? Oops, start with a capital letter. Where do the rocks come from? I wonder why was there a shell in that rock? Why is there a shell fossil in the rock, we can say? I wonder, how old are the rocks? Hmm. 
what else? Remember, those rocks, while they, we don't know exactly where they came from in St. Louis, we do know that they came from St. Louis. So you might wonder, what is a seashell fossil doing in St. Louis? is a seashell fossil doing in St. Louis rocks? Well, that, that is what we're going to explore for the rest of this lesson together today. I cannot wait to figure this out with you. To think about how Missouri's ecosystems have changed over time, we visited a creek near our house. We really like to walk along this creek and see what types of animals we can observe. If you watch carefully, you can see turkey vultures flying around. You can see also a lot of rocks. There are so many rocks to go through and so many fossils that you can find. So if you look closely at these turkey vultures, you can see that they live up in the trees. Watch them fly, isn't that so cool? They're scavengers, which means they eat dead animals. Take a look at what they do here. They're sunning or basking in the sun. Why do you think they do that? Their wings are so large. We also see some frogs and toads in this creek. Aren't they cute? Oh, I really like this pretty green one. In the creek, you can also see some minnows or small fish swimming around. You have to look carefully. They sometimes shine in the sun. Can you see that? They really seem to like this slow-moving, shallow water of the creek. Let's explore the rocks in this creek bed. When you're digging through a lot of rocks, it can be hard to tell if you're looking at a fossil or not. That's why I asked some experts to help me out. One of them is my friend Asa Kaplan. He loves finding fossils, and he is truly an expert at identifying them. One of the first fossils that he helped me identify are crinoids. You can find so many crinoids in Missouri, so much that they are our state fossil. Here's Asa explaining a little bit about what a crinoid is and how you can identify them. So uh, some of the nice things we find out here are these crinoid stems. Stem, since it's uh, an organism that lives on the seafloor but elevates its body above the seafloor, almost like a flower would, but this is an animal. So it uses a stack of these to get itself up that seafloor. And here we have that stack of all those circles, oh. right? But this is, well, the animal's gone. It's just the impression or what we call the mold. Anyway, there's that stalk. Here's the body. You can see where it attaches there. And here's all the arms. This is a filter feeding animal. This is the crinoid. Um, and in Missouri, you can find the whole crinoids like this. And that's not true lots of places. You just end up with this a lot of places. So, so I like seeing both. What I'm taking away from this is that a crinoid is a sea animal. It is a sea animal, and I should add, it has multiples of five arms, five or 10 or 15 or 20. And if you think of other animals that have five arms, eh, starfish, sea urchins have five rays on them, sea cucumbers have five tentacles. These are all animals that only live in the ocean. It can be hard to imagine what a crinoid looked like when it was living. So here's a picture of one of its relatives that lives in an ocean today. Here's a more fully formed example of a crinoid fossil. Can you imagine them just floating in the ocean in Missouri? Here's another rock we found in the creek. What type of fossil do you think it is? Here's what Asa thinks. So first I saw this shape and I said, well, that could be from an animal, but it just could be a rock feature. Turned it over to see if I could find anything else, and I saw this strange layering. You can see it kind of goes up and it comes back down and it has these concentric layers. And that's typical of some kinds of sponges. There's also corals that do something similar. And it's tough with this preservation to tell what it is, but I'm pretty happy saying it's one of those and it's definitely a fossil of an animal. Here's what sponges look like today. And remember, they can only live in the ocean. We also found this brachiopod fossil. 
that is kind of like a seashell. All right, we saw a lot of cool things in that creek. I love exploring that creek so much. It's something new every time I visit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chart some of the things that we observed in that creek. Are you ready? All right, let's see, what should we add to this list? What are some things that we saw? I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things to see was the turkey vulture. So let's write. Turkey vulture. It was alive. And its habitat needs, what do you think? I would say um, a forest area. Okay, what else did we see? Let's think. Uh, we saw oak, oak trees. They were alive and their habitat needs, they need land to grow on. Okay, what else? We saw a couple of frogs. They were alive, and their habitat needs, what do you think? They need, I would say, some shallow, slow-moving water. So we could say shallow ponds or creeks. Okay, what else? What else did we see? Hmm. We saw some fish. They were alive. And their habitat needs, they kind of actually need the same thing that the turtles, or the frogs need. They need shallow ponds and creeks. Okay, so those are all the things that we saw that were alive. We also saw some things that were evidence of living things from a long time ago. We saw fossils. So the kinds of fossils we saw are crinoids. Remember, those are the animals that look kind of like strange Dr. Seuss flowers, maybe. So we saw crinoids, and they were fossils. And they need oceans. They need an ocean habitat. What else? We saw a sponge. Sponge is not just for cleaning, it's actually a living thing too. So a sponge. They were fossils. And they're just like crinoids, they need an ocean habitat. We also saw some seashells and those are called brachiopods. Kind of a fancy word. They're fossils and they also need an ocean habitat. So we saw a lot of different things here. Some of them were alive at the moment, some of them were fossils, meaning that they were alive a long time ago. So what patterns do you observe about, about what we saw in the creek? What do you think? And what does that tell us about Missouri's ancient past compared to Missouri today? All right, I bet you have some good ideas about what's happening in this data table here. So I think the pattern is that the types of animals that are alive today need forested land and shallow ponds or creeks while the animals that were alive millions of years ago need an ocean habitat to survive. So what that tells us about Missouri is that it has not always looked the same. A long time ago, hundreds of millions of years ago, it was actually an ocean. Can you imagine Missouri being an ocean? And now it's a lot of forests and prairies and rivers and lakes and things like that, but definitely not an ocean. So that tells us, this evidence here tells us 
that ecosystems can change over time. All right, I think it's time for us to get up and stretch. We've been sitting for too long. Come on, Wayne, let's get up and stretch. It'll feel good. Give it a try. Oh, that's a good stretch. Doesn't it feel good to stretch your body? Let's read a book to find out more about fossils. This book is called, What Are Fossils? And it is by Natalie Hyde. It is published by Crabtree Publishing Company. This is a nonfiction book, so we won't read every single page out of it, and we might not even read every single word on the page. But let's see what we can find out that applies to what we're trying to figure out. Once upon a time, the plants and animals that lived on Earth millions of years ago are very different from the ones that live today. How do we know what kind of creatures roamed the planet so long ago? We find traces of them in fossils. Preserved from the past. The remains or traces of living organisms that have been preserved are called fossils. Most plants and animals decompose or break down quickly after death. So let's take a look at what happens when fossils form. An animal dies and their tissues start to break down or decompose. Layers of sediment, which is like tiny rocks, cover those bones. And then the weight of the soil, it presses down or compresses the fossil bones. And then over time, the erosion process exposes the fossil. So that's one way that fossils can form. But our fossils are ancient ocean animals that actually don't have bones. So let's see what this book says about that. Forming methods. Different types of fossils are formed in different ways. Sometimes a plant or animal is buried under layers of mud or clay. Over time, these layers are pressed together to form sedimentary rock that keeps the shapes of these organisms. Other times, minerals in water seep into the organism's remains and harden. This creates a mineralized copy of the organism. Maybe that has something to do with how our fossils were formed. Oh, and I think I want to read about the Burgess Shale. It says it's in British Columbia, Canada, and it's one of the most important fossil beds in the world. Millions of years ago, the area was flat and covered by a warm, shallow sea. Hey, that sounds familiar. I think that that is what was happening in Missouri, too. When sea creatures died, they were buried under mud. The heat and pressure from the layers of sediment turned the mud into shale and the sea creatures into fossils. Later, the seabed was pushed upward during mountain building. Now this fossil bed is high up in the Rocky Mountains. Okay, so that's similar to what happened. Ours might not have formed shale, maybe it did in some places in Missouri, but we were looking at limestone. So there are different kinds of rocks that can form fossils, but they're all sedimentary if they're forming fossils. Raiders of the past. Let's see what this is saying. Paleontologists are scientists who study fossils to learn about life on our planet long ago. Fossils are the only way we can know about the types of plants and animals that lived on Earth before human beings. Fossils help us understand how and where life began and how it changed over time. So it looks like paleontologists can tell the date of fossils by looking at the age of the rocks, and they have special ways of determining that age. This one up here, or down here, says old and young. The oldest fossils we've found so far are of ancient stromatolites. Stromatolites are rock columns formed by the buildup of minerals around the growth of algae. While the oldest fossil stromatolites date back almost 3 billion years ago, new stromatolites are still forming in coastal waters today. Now, what's interesting about stromatolites is that actually we do have stromatolites in Missouri, and they're very, very old, um, and they're only found in certain places. So maybe sometime you could travel somewhere in Missouri to see stromatolites. Stay in shape. Oh, this is, I think this is going to tell us how a fossil is formed. When a plant or animal is covered with mud or clay, an imprint fossil is created. 
These fossils often have very precise details that tell paleontologists what the plant or animal might have looked like. So that's what we were trying to do when we were looking at the fossils. We were using clay or silly putty to try and see all of the details on that fossil. And so you can do that at home. You can sort of mimic that when you find things around the house. If you have any Play-Doh or silly putty, you can take an imprint or a mold of what you find. So fossils can tell us a lot about an organism. And did you know that there's a special type of fossil called a coprolite and it's actually fossilized poop? So these fossils give paleontologists clues about the diet of the ancient creatures. Coprolites can also provide information on plant species. So if the dinosaur, for example, ate plants, we could see the coprolite fossil to tell what types of plant it ate. That's pretty cool. Well, that book had some helpful information. It showed us how the fossils in this creek bed might have formed. And that took a long time to occur. And the time it took for Missouri to change from an ocean to a prairie or forested area also took a really long time. But not all ecosystem changes happen slowly. Some are happening fast, and that's because of human interactions. The types of changes that had to occur for Missouri to go from a warm, shallow ocean habitat to an area with prairies and forests and rivers and lakes took millions of years to happen. But some ecosystem changes can happen really fast, even within our own lifetimes. And that can be because of things that humans do. So let's take my backyard, for example. It has a lot of grass and that's about it right now. But it didn't always look like that. Before, let's say maybe 100 or 200 years ago, it was an area that probably had prairie plants or maybe even a forest. So if it was a prairie, let's say, it would have had lots of grasses that are really tall um, as well as flowers, and that would attract a lot of different wildlife that I don't see currently in my backyard. Things like lots of different types of birds and pollinators, um, and unfortunately, we don't see a lot of it anymore because it's just grass. So that's not necessarily a good thing because we like our habitats to have a lot of different things in them so that way life can really be successful. So what do you think? What would you do to improve my backyard to make it look a bit more like a normal Missouri habitat? What changes would you make to it and why? So one solution that we came up with is to plant native Missouri plants in our backyard. So like I said, it was just grass before and that doesn't bring a lot of biodiversity to my backyard. So we planted things like hairy mountain mint, Missouri evening prim primrose, and prairie blazing star. And as you can see, they're small right now. So it won't just be this quick fix where all of a sudden my backyard is a pollinator paradise, uh, but eventually these plants will grow and those will bring different types of animals that are native to Missouri to my backyard and then my ecosystem will be healthier. Well, that was really fun exploring Missouri's ancient ocean past with you. Did you learn some cool new stuff? Well, I hope that this is just the beginning of your science explorations. There are a lot of things that you can do with your family to keep the fun going. You can take walks through neighborhoods, especially those with old buildings in them, to see if you can find any of that white gray St. Louis limestone that we talked about earlier. If you see that stone, you can look very carefully and you might see some crinoids or sea urchins or corals that are evidence of Missouri's ancient ocean past. You can also go to a creek bed in a park or a nearby conservation area. And when you're walking in that creek bed, you can just look very carefully and see if you see any of the types of fossils that we looked at together today. If you're doing that, you can take some silly putty with you or a pencil and paper, and you can draw what you see or take an imprint or a casting of what you see with these fossils here. So let's take a look at what that is if we take a casting of a fossil. We're taking a casting of this shell. Okay, let's see how you do it. Okay, here's how you do it. You put it on the fossil. What is that? Put it in there. It's silly putty. And you have to put it in there. 
and when you take it out, it has a nice casting of whatever fossil you want to take a casting of. Let's take a look at a casting of this crinoid fossil that we found. Okay, pretty good. That is pretty good. You can really see the arm, you can see the whole body. Can I see it, Henry? Mm -hmm. Well, we've figured out so much just by noticing and wondering, haven't we? How about you? Did you get any of your questions answered? I think that we answered some of these questions that we recorded here. We were wondering about that rock that we saw, where we saw the seashell fossil on the side of the building in St. Louis. And because of that, we explored the creek and found all different sorts of ocean fossils. And that led us to the conclusion that Missouri used to have an ancient ocean. That is so weird to think about that we used to be covered in an ocean. But that ecosystem has changed over time. And now in that creek that we explored and in St. Louis City, it really doesn't look like that anymore. For example, in the creek, now we found turkey vultures and oak trees and small fish and frogs. And that wouldn't have been there in that ancient ocean. We also thought about how Missouri's ecosystems have changed in the short term too because of humans. So humans have cleared prairies and forests and put um, plain old grass there, and that's not necessarily good for the ecosystem. So humans can also fix those things by adding more native plants, just like I'm trying to do in my backyard. So what else? Or is there anything else that you figured out today that you really want to remember? Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you had as much fun as I did. And remember what I said, this is just the beginning of your science explorations. So whether you get outside to a creek or a park nearby, or you're looking at old buildings, remember to keep on noticing and wondering because that is the most important thing that you can do. All right, see you later. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.